Well, hey guys, my name's David Bowden and I'm a spoken word poet. Uh, I've been asked to share my story and um, I hope you enjoy it. You know, when I think about my story, I think about a lot of people who come up to me after a show and ask me um, a question. A and they ask me the question, um, how did you get in to what you're doing? And um, some, some of the people really wanna know you know, how, how do I become a spoken word poet or how do I become someone who can perform at events or, you know, an artist that can influence culture and stuff like that. Um, and, and other of them, I, 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 I kind of see through and see that they're asking a question that says, how do I become someone important? How do I become someone um, famous or some kind of uh, figure? And I think it's hilarious that they'd ask me that because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing like that at all. Uh, not, not, not a famous person or a celebrity or a, or a figure. I'm just a guy who is allowed to get up on a few stages and that changes people's perception of who you are and it makes you more important. And, um, it's kind of a weird thing that we've developed in this world, but people, they come up and they ask me, well, how do I get to do what you do? And it reveals that desire that we all have inside of us to, be important and to be successful and to be influential and all of this is propagated on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. We always want people to know what we're up to. We want people to have some sense of who we are. We want a following. We want fans. We want likes. Um, and it's a disease that our culture has developed that says my identity is based on my reception by others. And my story in how I got started couldn't be farther from that kind of a reality. Um, I was going to Oklahoma Christian University studying Bible and biblical languages, and I was just a bookworm, a Bible nerd. I just wanted to stay in school, get a master's and a doctorate, and maybe teach at the college level or uh, be a youth minister or something like that. And God just swept the rug out from under me uh, when I was a sophomore in college one year. Uh, me and a buddy, we drove up to Chicago from Oklahoma to see a band play at the House of Blues. And opening up for that band was a spoken word group. Um, and, you know, being from Oklahoma, we don't have much culture here. So I, uh, I didn't really have a framework for what spoken word poetry was. So this was my first encounter with it. And I felt in that moment, God just saying, this is what I want you to do. This is the tool that I want to give you to speak to the church. And I was like, okay. And so I wrote my first poem on the way home from Chicago and started performing at any open mic night, you know, any slam poetry night, any anything that I could. I performed at restaurants and uh, bars and I was usually the only Christian there. And uh, it, was, it was a really fun, formative time for me to learn this craft and to learn what it meant to communicate through it. And, um, you know, I, I never was much of a networker. I was never much of a go-getter or anything like that. I just wanted to do spoken word poetry and do it well. And um, God just started opening doors. And I think that's another question that people ask is like, well, how do I get people to see my stuff? You know, because I just put it on YouTube and no one sees it. Um, and I think we have to realize that we're not if you have a talent or a skill, you're not necessarily called to be famous or to be known for it or to be popular or for it to be received by a lot of people. You're simply called to steward that gift and use it in a way that can glorify God. And I, I hope that's what I was trying to do in my, in my early career. And God just opened up doors. And um, my very first show that I actually got paid money for was uh, ended up being for like 6,000 people. I went from performing for like 40 people to performing for 6,000 people and I was way out of my element, way out of my league, uh, way too cool of an opportunity for someone like me, but God just opened that door and from there he's just made all these connections and opened all these doors and when I look back at it, the question that I ask is, did I have anything to do with that at all? <laughs> and I think the answer is, is no, not really. Uh, I, I tried to do my best, but God 
he moves things and he opens things and he does things that we can't even fathom or orchestrate or force. Um, and so to those of you out there who are wanting to do something with your life, using your skills and using your talents and abilities, um, the biggest piece of advice I could give you from my own story is just go out there and do what you do and be who you are and create what you create regardless of who's seeing it and what kind of attention it brings just do it and do it well and um, you know God's brought me from that place of being a, a Bible student at a small private university in Oklahoma to being able to travel around the world doing spoken word poetry and I can't think of one reason why it should be me and not someone else. I think it's just because this is the place that God has me. And um, I know that there's a place that God has for you. And that might be on a stage or it might be on a screen, but it might be loving people behind the scenes. It might be working on the side of a street. It might be, you know, loving kids in a classroom or it might be teaching. It might be janitor. It might be waiter. It might be you know, politician, I don't know, but God has something for you. He'll open those doors. He'll, he'll call you because he's prepared good works in advance for you to do. And so um, if you can get anything out of my story at all, it's that God has a story for you. And I pray that you will pursue it with all your heart and give him glory and not yourself.